God bless. You may be seated, please. And greetings to you in the wonderful name of our living Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Having graduated the fourth family corps last night at the Wake College of Biblical Research Indiana campus, I am blessed to have the joyful privilege of graduating the Eighth Way Corps here tonight at the Wake College at Emporia, Kansas. In addressing our graduating Eighth Way Corps, I express to God how honored, grateful, and blessed the Weirwell family is that in this year, in the sunflower state of Kansas, both our eldest as well as our youngest child are significantly honored. Our eldest son, Donald Ernst, was hooded for the Doctor of Education degree from the University of Kansas. And tonight, our youngest daughter, Sarah Catherine, receives her WACOR certificate and an Associate of Theology degree as one of the eighth WACOR here at the Wake College of Emporia. Mrs. Weirwell and I are thankful to God for our family, including not only the two children mentioned, but our other son, John Paul, two daughters, Karen and Mary, and our three son-in-laws, James, John, and Kevin, tomorrow, and two daughter-in-laws, Wanda and Sherry, tomorrow, making a total of 10, plus 12 grandchildren, all believers and all active in the way ministry. Tonight, for the Eighth Way Corps, their families and their guests, the champions of liberty. The biblical usage of the number eight indicates a new beginning. This achievement day for you, Eighth Way Corps, cannot be covered with language sufficiently detailed and descriptive to fully declare your love and your thanksgiving for all who throughout the past four years have specifically believed with you to see this day come to pass in your life. John 10.10 10 states, Jesus Christ said, I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. The words, more abundantly, take it into a new category. To have life which is abundant would be tremendous. But when it moves into the words of more than abundant, more abundantly, it news, moves into a new category, and the number of that more abundant is eight. In Romans 8.37, the great declaration of God's Word states that in Christ Jesus we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us and who gave Himself for us. The literal translation is that we are super conquerors, more than conquerors, not supermen, but super conquerors. And to be a super conqueror, more than conqueror, moves it into a new dimension, and that new dimension, biblically, is the number eight. You know, people, there is a simplicity about truth. Error is always complicated. A man of wisdom has to believe what God's Word says. 
any substitute, no matter how intellectual or reasonable sounding, is error. In Psalm 111, verse 10, the Word of God states, Reverence for the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In Proverbs 4, 7, the Word of God declares that wisdom is the principal thing. At our eldest son's hooding, his doctoral hooding at the University of Kansas on this last May the 19th, the vice chancellor of the university and dean of the graduate school, Francis Deegan Horowitz, stated that in the academic realm, free pursuit must challenge established order and sometimes be an irritant to current beliefs. I would like to state again what she declared and stated that day on May the 19th here in the Sunflower State of Kansas at the University of Kansas. This dean of the graduate school and vice chancellor of the university made this statement. Free pursuit must challenge established order and sometimes be a irritant to current belief. The way biblical research and teaching ministry people has and is challenging the established religious orders and it continues to be an irritant to current religious beliefs. We the way believers subscribe and we adhere to the authority and the authenticity of the Bible, the Word of God. In cooperation with our Eighth Way Corps, the graduates, we will continue to challenge the established orders of so-called Christianity. We will continue to be an irritant to the current religious beliefs until such a time as they too accept and align their doctrines with the authority and the authenticity of the Scriptures. The way ministry knows and believes that the Word of God is the will of God. The number eight in Hebrew is the word Shemona, spelled S-H-M-O-N-E-H. It is from the root Shemayan, Hebrew word Shemayan, and that word is spelled S-H-A-H-M-A-Y-E-N. As a noun, it means superabundant. As a participle, its meaning is abounding in strength. Numerically, eight is the superabundant number in the Word of God. It is also the first cubic number, two times two times two equals eight, which gives us the length, the breadth, and the height equal. Eight is also the dominical number. It is the number of the name, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is also the number of the books in the Old Testament, 24, 3 times 8. As the number 7 is the number of perfection, the number of completeness, so the number 8 is the number which goes over and beyond. Number 8 is a new first. It is 7 plus one. Seven is perfection and completeness. Eight is a new beginning. It's the number of seven plus one, meaning eight superabundant. 
abounding. It is significant in God's word that God's covenants with Abraham are eight in number in the Old Testament. The Feast of Tabernacles lasted eight days. The record of that truth is in Leviticus 23, 39. The consecration of the high priest was on the eighth day. Leviticus 8, 35 and 9, 1. Noah was the eighth believer in the line, the eighth person. 2 Peter 2, 5. There were eight souls saved. 1 Peter 3.20 Circumcision occurred on the eighth day. The transfiguration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was on the eighth day after the first announcement of Christ's suffering, thus relating itself to his glory. So I could go on and on tonight from God's Word. But for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see, surely eight is significantly of divine design for those who will to hear and who will to receive. There are eight unities given in Ephesians 4. There are eight graces in Colossians 3. There are eight wisdoms from above. And as I said earlier, truth is simple. Error is always complicated. And a man of wisdom believes what God's Word says. Any substitute no matter how intellectual or reasonable it may sound, is error. As was stated in Psalm 111.10, reverence for the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and Proverbs 4, wisdom is the primary thing. We go to James chapter 3 and show you those eight evidences of wisdom from above. 317. You will notice if you read earlier that it talks about wisdom that descendeth not from above, that's from the other source, which is earthly, sensual, and devilish. And that's the kind of wisdom that always manifests itself in envying strife, confusion, every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above, verse 17, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. And if you'll notice that verse very carefully, there are eight evidences in that verse. The first is that this wisdom which is from above, which is from God, is pure, peaceable, number two, gentle, number three, easy to be entreated, number four, full of mercy, number five, good fruits, number six, without partiality, seven, and without hypocrisy, number eight. In Ephesians chapter 4, you have the eight unities. Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 4, if you really want to understand all of this greatness, you have to realize that we endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, verse 3. There is one body, verse 4, one Spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, 
one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through you and through all and in you all. When you work this fourth and fifth and sixth verse, you have one body. These are the eight unities of the Spirit which we keep in the bond of peace. One body. Number two, one spirit. Number three, one hope. Number four, one Lord. Number five, one faith. Number six, one baptism. Number seven, one God. And number eight, one Father. Those are the eight unities. Always a new beginning for those who want to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And then in Colossians, Colossians 3, verse 12, has the eight graces lifted for every believer. Put on, therefore, I'm in Colossians 3, 12, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the word of Gapel, which is the bond, the adhesiveness of perfectness. And if you will note very carefully, verse 12, 13, and 14, you have those eight graces. Number one is mercies in verse 12. Kindness, number two. Humbleness of mind, three. Meekness, four. Long-suffering, five. Forbearance, for forbearing one another is six. Forgiving or forgiveness one of one another is seven. And number eight is above all these things, charity, which is the love of God in the renewed mind in manifestation. So you see, when you look at the greatness of this word, you see the number eight has a new beginning meaning. You are the eighth core. You are launching out in a new beginning. And you are the champions of liberty. You are carrying the brand mark of a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a new beginning for you. And the outreach of the word of God over the world. You heard earlier when they played the tape that was made while I was talking with our people in Great Britain earlier this afternoon that I'd penned some lines for them, but I penned them also for you because all the world was on my heart this morning knowing what's happening in Great Britain and Europe here and other parts of our country and world. And I penned those lines that you heard earlier, which I would like to give to the Eighth Corps here tonight. I was thinking of our lives and how the sands of time so swiftly pass through life's small hourglass. Yet, when all the sands of a lifetime are gathered below, it's the return of Christ that will again make anew life's timeless hourglass to flow. That is how I feel about you, the eighth score. You are absolutely God's best, having the best of God's word to offer to people. You are the champions of liberty. You are the ones that will hold forth the greatness of God's word. 
And there is nothing that sets a man free except truth. Truth sets men and women free. And the greatest truth is in the Word of God. Everything starts with the Word. There is no wisdom that a man can have until he has the wisdom of God's Word. And you are the eighth core launching out in a new beginning as the champions of liberty with the declaration of the truth of the greatness of God's Word. And I love you with all the love that God has put in my soul for God's people all over the world, and especially you, the Eighth Corps. Father, I thank you for the privilege of allowing me to be here with the Eighth Corps on this wonderful occasion. Thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, and your goodness unto us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God bless. I love you. You're the best.